name? Friends and neighbors? Or shall I say this afternoon? Welcome to the political process. Uh, I'm your host, longtime listener. Be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment below. This is a new series that we are starting, a new game in general. Um, just bought this the other day. Been kind of messing around with it a little bit to get a feel for it. Um, and we'll talk more about the game in a second. But first things first. Obviously, you can tell by the name of this game that it is going to have some political um, you know, opinions or uh, like, you know, decisions that we, we've got to make. And so this is not meant to be like a political platform in any way, shape or form. So keep in mind that my objective is basically to just try and get elected, reelected and move up ultimately, hopefully to the, you know, the office of the presidency. Um, and to do that, I probably will have to pick either Republican or Democrat and then also um, vote accordingly when it comes to legislation. Otherwise, my party will not be happy with me and it will be really hard for me to get like a, you know, a nomination for the presidency, for example. So there's that. So in the comments, it's totally fine to throw stuff in there that is like game oriented but if it's dude i can't believe you voted uh like pro-choice or pro-life like I, that that can't be in the comments like if it's in there i will take it out because that's not what this game is you know, like in this series is meant to be um i've just i enjoy like simulations like this it's very menu oriented as you can see so not a lot of uh you know graphic <sighs> Uh, stuff going on here but again the game is meant to kind of walk through the political process starting as low as like school board member all the way up through the presidency and you'll get a feel as we dive in here to how those different um, offices vary in terms of like your responsibilities your um, you know what you actually can control or, um, you know, influence in those roles. So anyway, we're going to jump right in here and I will just go start by saying like, as you're creating a character, they give you a lot of different options here as far as, you know, picking some general things, appearance, some policy, uh, preferences. I'm not sure exactly what this is, but I believe it's probably something like I could say, uh, you know, governor of Texas, you know, and then put years in there. But I, I really don't know, frankly, uh, exactly how that works. Traits, you can select from any of these traits, which is interesting because you could just make yourself like all negative traits and make it really hard because anybody you're going up against could easily just do an attack ad and say, this guy is mean, narcissistic, pessimistic, incompetent, scandalous, and arrogant, and corrupt. Like, and he's foolish. Why would you vote for him? Uh, so anyway, they give you the ability to pick all those traits before you even start. Then you can give yourself as much cash as you realistically want. I think there's a limit, like a billion dollars or something along those lines. But you can give yourself a bunch of cash to start things off. Uh, you can give yourself political points, which allow you to influence uh, the vote of other people in your role. So, like, for example, if you're a senator and you've got a gazillion political points and you write some legislation, you have a, a much higher chance of other senators, like, changing what they would have voted for to, to get in line with you because of how much influence you have. We're not going to give ourselves any of that. Uh, we're going to start with no uh, previous position. Uh, so what we're going to do here, we're going to go back, we're going to load a character preset, and I've created a few. Um, we're going to start with a moderate Democrat. And I decided to start Democrat because um, if you really think about in American politics, a lot of times, at least when it comes to fiscal issues, um, Republicans are conservative 
because of the financial side of things. Like, if we're going to spend more on, you know, social programs and things like that, or universal health care or a universal basic income, for example, like that money's got to come from somewhere, which means we have to tax people more to be able to do that and still maintain a balanced budget. And so that's why Republicans a lot of times vote against those things. They don't want higher taxes. But in this scenario, it's a video game. If I can on paper just raise taxes a little bit in order to pay for a little bit higher, um, you know, expenditures on social programs, like we'll just do it because like I don't have to pay the consequences of raising taxes. Like maybe my constituents don't necessarily love it, but if I can just raise taxes on the wealthy, like on paper, that makes it work. And I don't care because it's just a video game. So we're going to go democratic for that reason. I know that might have been the long way around to get there, but hopefully you kind of, hopefully you kind of understand. So anyway, here we have Mr. Dwayne Bunker. We're going to make him 22 years old. Make him 21. Why not? Uh, so we're going to say he uh, graduated college a little early, and now he's looking to get into the political spectrum. We're not going to do anything with his appearance. It's fine there. Uh, so for policy, like you can go in here and select policy presets, and then like for fiscal and social, you can pick between liberal, conservative, moderate, and libertarian, and that will – you know, automatically pick all of the options down this list here for you. I've already got these kind of the way that I want them for what I would call a moderate Democrat. And I will not go down through each one, but I will at least show you the sections uh, here. Like you can see economic policy, and then there are a few very either or type options, which is really difficult to pick when it's a very complex issue and like just me being humble, uh, you know, 38 year old dad from Tennessee will tell you that's one of the things wrong with American politics right now is that we take these complex issues and we try and break them down into a yes or no question. Um, and that's a lot of times what is actually being voted on. Like, are you for or against abortion? And it's like, it's a really complex issue. I don't like. I don't think it's a yes or no question. Uh, and I'm not necessarily saying that about abortion. I'm just saying, like in general, a lot of the questions kind of get phrased that way to try and trap a politician into looking like they support one thing fully when the only option they had was either this or this. They can't say this, but with these other stipulations like it just doesn't work that way so anyway economic policy tax policy guns education immigration miscellaneous which i think that these are a lot of yeah they are definitely miscellaneous as you can see here um social policy energy environmental and then military and health. So those are the sections. And I've selected all the options that I think get me to be a somewhat moderate Democrat. And then you can even, after you do those individually, you can go like this. And it will tell you kind of where you land. So it scales from um, very liberal, liberal, moderate, conservative, and very conservative. Um, so like we fall just on this side of the middle of the spectrum and that lands us as democrat and i should point out that like socially liberal is a little bit different like fiscally liberal or conservative is really easy to explain uh basically liberal means we're totally cool with spending cash to uh you know get things done while conservatives are a little bit more um conservative with government spending and so generally speaking that also means they are conservative with how much the the government is involved period um so anyway i that might not have been the best explanation but i'm no expert 
keep that in mind. So now we need to pick where we're going to be from. And remember that we are a moderate Democrat here. Um, the chances are, like, if we go somewhere like New York, or California, all we have to do is win the primary and we are going to win, period. Like, whatever office we're running for, there's not going to be significant competition from a Republican with maybe a few exceptions as far as like if I go to New York and then go to a county that's very rural, that will have a higher concentration of Republicans. Like so for local office, I'd be in trouble. Uh, but if we go somewhere like New York and then go to like New York City, we win the primary, then we win the office. So there's that. I think for a challenge, I want to go to a swing state like Pennsylvania. And you see here, it is a dead heat, Democrats versus Republicans. Um, and then, you know, a, a fair share of independents, which I think this is interesting because basically what this would allow me to do is, I'll show you. We go here, and now we can pick where we want to be from. I could come down here to Philadelphia, and it's like no contest. I can go to, like, Pittsburgh – and it's still pretty heavily Democratic, but there's a mix of Republicans that might make it a little bit challenging. And then statewide, like this is the county I grew up in, there's going to be a lot of counties that look like this, where it's a lot of red, you know, a, a decent sized slice of blue, but nowhere near. It's usually going to be about double uh, red versus blue. So anyway, that's why as a state, you end up with a pretty good mix of Democrats and Republicans. Like here's where Harrisburg is. Uh, and it's, again, it's, it leans Democrat, uh, Democratic, but it's not by much. So we're going to start here in Pittsburgh, um, where, like I said, if we win the primary, we should probably win whatever office we're running for. Um, but it might not be a slam dunk. We'll have to spend some money on marketing and campaigns and whatever. So for difficulty, we'll just leave it on normal for now. Um, like I, I want it to, I want it to be a challenge, especially as we get farther up in office, we're going to have to be really strategic. So this one, um, <clears throat> we will allow this. I don't think that we'll use it, but <clears throat> I think this is basically like if I was to get married, I could give my wife spec you know, specific traits or whatever. I'm not sure exactly. So now we know that we're going to be from Pittsburgh. And now we can look down here at the different districts. Uh, and you can see here, pretty heavily Democrat for the school board and city council. The state house is pretty Democrat. Same with Senate. Congressional district, though, gets really tight. So 44 to 41, like this is going to be a tough spot to win. So if we're going to get to Congress, we're going to have to really be strategic. And we're probably going to have to have a lot of money um, to be able to do that. So sorry, my uh, I work at a standing desk and the foot of the desk is like falling off. Not really falling off and not really the foot of the desk. Anyway, it's like an end cap of the leg. Sorry. All right. So let's move forward again. This is going to be tough. And I could go like this and change this around and say, boom, we'll just do that one as my district. But let's leave that on there as a challenge just because it's the default. Boom. And here we go. So it's going to throw a bunch of people into office. Uh, we have to pick a chief of staff. I don't think it matters at all. So like we'll just pick this guy because he's kind of young. And then here we go. Chief of Staff, Perry Cunningham. So he's going to be helping me navigate. Um, again, like political goals are up to you. There are no victory conditions. You can just do whatever you want. You can retire. You can uh, you can lose a race and run again. It might be hard. Uh, but anyway, the general idea is run for office, work your way up, and hopefully um, you know work your way to the federal level. Um, and ideally all the way to the White House. So um, now see here, he says, encourages you to look at the concepts page, which provides details about different aspects of the game. That's kind of like a help menu. And I'll show you that 
for anybody who's interested in a game like this, uh, there are a lot of details here that you could work your way down through. And again, like there's lots going on here. Um, I feel like I know enough about politics to be able to navigate some of this anyway. Um, but for starters, like you see here under office, we do not currently hold a job. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go find a job that we want. So obviously having zero work experience um, and political experience, we're probably going to want to keep it simple here. I could try to run for mayor, but that might be a little bit aggressive right out of the gate. We've got two million bucks to work with. So what my plan is going to be, and I'll tell you this before we even kind of get going, is my plan is going to be run for city council, do that for a few years, become mayor, do that for a few years, and then start looking for either a house or Senate position. Um, so the key is going to be from a financial perspective, we need to be like making money over these first like four to eight years kind of thing because we want to be able to bring in a bunch of cash to spend on a campaign for, you know, a congressional seat. So uh, let's start with, again, city council member. Uh, now we need to need to, to pick a campaign member. Uh, let's go with McKenzie, 50 year old. Uh, doesn't, again, it doesn't really matter who you pick. I, I think it's just, you know, it is like, it makes no difference in the game. So now she's basically going to tell you your primary election will occur in 18 weeks. So increase name recognition and get people to vote for you. Pretty simple, straightforward process. So now we need to, to pick a campaign platform. And remember that we are a moderate Democrat. So generally speaking, a good one to pick is usually going to be economic. And we're going to say that one of our objectives is to get, is going to be to, um, we could say, increase minimum wage. But remember, we're running for city council. You don't see a lot of cities that pass like a city minimum wage. Those are pretty rare. So I think the two that would make the most sense would be something like reduced property taxes or increased per capita income. This one sounds more like something a Republican would run on. Um, and then, again, when it comes to, like, city taxes, you're not going to make up by for reducing city property taxes by increasing, like, personal income tax. Like, that's usually done at a state or federal level. So we're going to go with increased per capita income. And the way we would do that is realistically, like, get better jobs coming into the area. I don't know that I can do a ton to influence this at the city level, but we'll at least try. Um, so now we're going to go with a second priority of, we'll say crime. So we're going to just try and reduce the total crime rate. And then for a third priority, let's say infrastructure. So we want to, like, if, you're, if you've ever driven through Pennsylvania, they are not exactly known for having the best roads in the country. In fact... At one time, it's a true story, Pennsylvania was voted having the worst roads in the country. The county that I grew up in was voted as having the worst roads in the state. And the city that I grew up in was voted having the worst roads in the county. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, like, there were, there were literally some roads that they didn't even bother with like speed limit signs because if you drove faster than about 20 miles an hour you could do damage to your car because it was like an old brick road that had been there forever i mean i'm talking brick road y'all and i mean it was cool because it was a brick road and they left it there forever because it was cool but also if you you know like it just got huge dips and swells and potholes or whatever to where it was just so bad and eventually they repaved it and you could do like 60 down that stretch, even though it was a 25. And people did 60 for a while because like, this is awesome. So anyway, we'll do that and we'll say increase road quality. 
Good enough. Now, as you can see here, I have zero funds, but um, did I show you that I gave myself two million bucks? I feel like I did, but I might not have. So on that base profile that we created for Dwayne Bunker, um, I gave myself some cash. You can give yourself up to, I think, like a billion dollars or it's a lot. Uh, we are going to donate personal funds here. And we're going to just go ahead and drop like all but 100K in there. All right. So that's how much we've got to work with. We won't need that for this campaign. That's faux show. But now we've got money to spend. Another thing that we want to do, and I, I don't know a ton about this game, but I did mess around with it a little bit. And what I will tell you is like if I go in here and I say Mackenzie, uh, she makes no money. Okay, so these are all volunteers, right? Um, and the reality is, like, I probably don't need to train these guys all the way up. But you can say here, click, train all staff. All of them get four stars to so where they are as efficient as they can be. But then you got to pay them more. So we're going to go like this, and we'll say, we'll train you. And she is now going to be paid... 962 bucks per week but that also gives me an extra two and a half hours of campaign time which i like and i could do that again and i get 3.75 i can do it again and now i've got an extra five hours of campaign time that's awesome we want that right now we got to pay her two grand a week but that's not that big of a deal Right, we're gonna do some fundraising and sh hopefully should make some money. Now, event manager, we also want to pay a little bit because of this right here. She's gonna be in charge of fundraising, so we'll say yes, yes, and yes. Now she's making about two grand, um, but we get larger audience sizes and we spend less on those events. And again, it's a like the fundraiser is what we want for her. Um, let's see. So the event coordinator will train you one time just to kind of keep going along those lines as far as being a little bit better at raising cash and spending less. So like press secretary, we don't need one because we won't be doing any interviews while running for city council. So there's no reason to, to do that. Uh, finance director... I'm not worried about either because I don't think anyone is going to be coming looking at our financial reports um, when, again, all we're running for is city council. New media director, campaign website, social media activity, online presence, and online donations. If it's anything to do with fundraising, we're going to train you, man. So online donations are now maxed out schedules the of the candidate and staff lodging and travel arrangements uh so i get a travel discount i'm gonna pass on that one actually no candidate campaign time we want that up so we'll maximize this one too now we have an extra 10 hours because we got five up top and now five here speech writer I'm not worried about because we won't be giving any speeches in this uh, campaign. Marketing, I will pay you because marketing impact is going to be somewhat important here. So you can get more money. Volunteer, recruiting and organizing volunteers. Increase their effectiveness and i think volunteers are going to be the ones that are running like the fundraisers and like the phone um phonathons or whatever so we'll we'll pay them so there's some places where we're saving cash here which can be important um but like now if we look at finance we're spending 10 grand a week we are not going to raise that much in donations while running for city council so, at this point in the game, we're going to be running, um, you know, at a deficit. 
but it's okay. So now, like, we go back here. The primary starts in 18 weeks, um, and we should win the primary. <laughs> um, now is where, like, I want to come in here. See, it still says 40 hours remaining. That will change next week because of the upgrades that we just made. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just go to automate. Like, you can go in here and say, all right, let's spend 40 hours doing door knocking. You hit continue, and they'll go do some stuff, right? But that's... Like, what I want to do is just come in here and say, yes, we're going to automate campaign events. We're not going to do any rallies. We're going to do a little bit of door knocking. In fact, let's do, like, 25% uh, door knocking to try and get people. Actually, let's go, like, 35. Early on, we want to get name recognition. So to do that, we got to go out and tell people who we are. We'll also try and do a little bit of fundraising. In fact, for right now, let's actually leave it 50-50. Once we get some name recognition up, then we will start focusing on fundraising. But we know we're not going to make that much money right now. So now we've got that. And again, if I go here, it says yes. We're at 50-50. Hit continue. And now, if I say, like, next turn, it will go ahead and just do this. And the different kinds of events that you can do are literally going, knocking on doors. It's going to increase... Uh, your name recognition, and you can get info about voter priorities and opinions, and it also increases, increases voter enthusiasm, like how likely they are to not only go vote, but also maybe tell their friends, etc. So interviews, you usually won't see these pop up, at least from what I've discovered playing the game a little bit, until you're running for higher office. Speeches, that'll happen after um, you, you can do speeches once you um, get a little bit more um, face time with some organizations. And you can see here, organizations will offer speech opp opportunities if you have a high enough trust score. So that's that. Rallies are pretty straightforward. You're going to try and get people to come out and, um, you know, rah rah event and then fundraising so we've already set these to where they are going to be doing door knocking and rallies and you notice when i go here like it doesn't say anything about speeches or interviews and it's because like you have to specifically select those ones if you want to do them uh, now marketing here's where we need to decide how much we think it's going to take for us to win and again you can pick to manually do this and say, television ad, we're going to spend all of our money on one television ad. It's going to get a ton of views, and we will 100% win if we just did that. But we're not going to do that. You have to pick a topic, etc. We're not going to do this. We are going to go into automate marketing and say yes. Each week, I want to spend 500 bucks on advertising. And... We're going to do radio ads, just general, and we're going to say we're going to focus on the economy, and we want economic growth. So I don't really know why you need a name for a marketing campaign, but we'll say economy radio. Come in, radio. All right, so there we go. So they're going to spend 500 bucks on that. We can also go ahead and say, like, direct mail. We'll do the same thing. We're going to go economic growth economy mail skadoosh now you can actually select who you want to send it to we're going to send it to everyone we want everybody to know who we are because eventually they might be voting for us for a higher office and we will want the vote of these people so let's hit continue and now basically at the end of each turn if you have unused um actually no in this case they are going to spend 500 bucks on these types of advertisements. And you can see here it's an even mix. So they'll you know, use their own discretion and they will spend some money to uh, get out the word. Now, hit continue. And now we're done with marketing. If we look here at who our opponents are, for city council, there is one uh, Republican that's running, but she has no chance. Now, Dwayne Boone, 64 years old, he's simple, he's a, compel he's a compulsive liar. We're not really worried about him. Um, 
Hannah Wiggins is just an average person. Uh, so bottom line is I'm really not that worried about winning this particular race. But what we will do is conduct a poll just for starters. Actually, no, we're going to wait. We're going to wait until we've done a little bit of campaigning to then run a poll and kind of see where we stand. But again, I feel like we should be able to win this office without a whole lot of effort. So now here is where like I could do some of this stuff. But I don't think we really need to do this yet. I mean, we're talking like national level organizations here that I don't need to be spending time right now talking to them when all I'm doing is running for city council in Pittsburgh. So we're not going to do any of that yet. Our, our policy is already set. You could do things here like open up an additional field office. We don't need to do that when all we're running for is city office. And then... Eventually, we will be able to endorse certain candidates, uh, and we'll learn more about that as we go. But for right now, I think we're ready to go ahead and advance. Now, you see, our name recognition is barely starting to creep up. We spent 450 on marketing campaigns, and I'm not sure why they never spend the full 500 or whatever you set, uh, set that to, but not a huge deal. Now, we only raised 1000 bucks, but like... We're not expecting to be raising a ton of money when all we're running for is city council and nobody knows who the heck we are. So that's not that bad. Now, what we do also see here is voter enthusiasm is pretty high among Democrats, which is cool. Um, and then when we look at our support for our policies, we're pretty high across the board. These are like for all voters not just democrats so in general a lot of people are okay with our policies that we've selected so that's good now now that we're one week in this week the only thing that we're going to do different is we're also going to see who intends to vote for us so if we go in here we're going to run a small poll it's a six percent margin of error but this is going to say basically we're just going around asking people who they're going to vote for in this election one question, who are you going to vote for in this election? And we're going to see, it's going to cost us 3500 bucks, not that big of a deal, but let's see how we're doing here. Right now, we are already leading uh, by 10% over Hannah Wiggins and by 15% over Dwayne Boone. Now, uh, Madeline Beasley, as you can see here, is getting 100%, but they are only asking Republican voters in that scenario because it's for the primary. So you have to pick which party you're going to run for and it is a closed election meaning democrat registered democrats have to vote for somebody on the democratic ticket if you are registered as a republican you have to vote for someone on that ticket so if they're asking republicans who they're going to vote for and there's only one running of course they're going to get 100 percent. but this is good i barely had to do anything and we're already the leader in the clubhouse so that said, I think we can probably just leave this the way it is for a little bit and just keep on working on bringing up our name recognition for a few turns. Let's get it up to about 50%. And now that we're here, let's go ahead and do another poll. Hopefully we're still right there in the driver's seat. It's closer, so we might need to do a little bit more on the marketing front. So here's what we're going to do. Old Aubrey here is already going to spend 500 bucks on advertising. We're going to do one television ad for like 20 grand. And you will be blown away how much this $20,000 is going to catapult us like way out in front in this race. Oh, we need to pick a topic. Let's just go economic growth. Boom. Look at this. Now, all of a sudden, name recognition through the roof. Uh, it didn't have a ton of effect on public opinion, but like everybody knows who we are now, and that's what we're going for in a local race like this. They don't need to know anything about us other than that we are running and we want them to vote for us. Because then when they go, like, think about it. When you go to vote for city council, do you know anything about the policies of the person that you're voting for 
or have you just seen names or you see the one at the top or whatever and it's like i don't really know anything that this person plans on doing and usually it comes down to name recognition who you vote for it's like oh yeah i've heard of that person even though i don't know them i don't know any of their friends but so that's kind of what we're going for with a local race here and now that we know that we're probably way out in front in this thing we are going to go into marketing uh actually no we're going to go to events we're going to automate events and we're done door knocking we don't need to do that anymore now let's just go get a bunch of cash so we'll say yes there, and we're done. Now, let's go ahead and advance to week 10, maybe, and run one more pull and see how we're doing here. Let's do 500 to close down the margin of error. Boom. We're way out in front now. So now we feel really good. I'm pretty sure that we can just burn through... We'll go all the way to week 17 and do one more pull right at the end just in case um, somebody's done something crazy. So now it's going to be at the end of next week. So what I want to do is run one more pull. We'll do it with a larger margin of error because I think we're okay here. 3500 bucks. We're still pretty well out in front. So we're ready to rock. We're about to be city council member. Dwayne Bunker at the age of 21. So, um, you can see here. Oh, so now here we are. They're going to show you some of the races. Like, here's the the Pittsburgh mayoral race. I'm assuming that Judd C. Hurley will win. Um, it, the star indicates that they are the incumbent. If we look at the school board, it's going to show you the races. What we want to look at is city council. We are in District 1, and we're already out to a really good start. 19% of the reporting is in, and that number just grew. Hannah was our closest competitor in terms of the other polls that we looked at, so we should be in good shape here. And you can see here, like, old Autumn in District 2 is running unopposed, which is nice. I would have loved to have had that right out of the gate, but it's okay. So we can probably speed this up because we're going to win. Sometimes early on in the uh, reporting, you're behind or it's looking kind of iffy, and then all of a sudden like a big swath of votes come in for you. So anyway, trying to kind of keep an eye on time because I don't want to have the episodes be too terribly long. All right, so we won. There we go. We got 46% of the vote, and if you look here, the the votes in the Democratic primary were divided by be, between three people for a total of over 6,500 votes, whereas in the Republican primary, only 3,200 votes. So that tells you that like if the people that voted for Hannah and the other Duane changed their vote to me, uh, which is – most likely, we will crush Madeline Beasley. Now, there might be some Republicans that didn't bother to go vote in the primary because they didn't need to because she's going to win. Um, so, like, there's a little bit of that going on. But I feel really good that in the general election for city council, we're going to win because this was, again, just the primary. But now it's going to come down to me and Madeline for city council member. So here. Here's our campaign manager. Congratulations on winning the primary. The hard part's over. I don't know why I'm doing that voice. Uh, party demographics are in my favor. So as long as I don't anger my base or lose too many independent votes, you will likely win the general election. Awesome. Thanks. So we probably don't need to do a whole lot of campaigning here. We're going to just continue to leave our marketing budget right there at 500 bucks a week. Um... And I think we will be good to go. So what we'll do is, like, we've got plenty of name recognition. Um, now, voter enthusiasm amongst Republicans is pretty low. That might eventually change throughout our career, hopefully for the better, if we do things that prove to people that we're willing to go across the aisle or whatever. So let's burn through a bunch of weeks here and try to get to where... We feel like it's a good time to run a poll and just kind of see where we stand. If I run a poll now, 
And I should point out, there are other things that you can pull about as far as, far as like policy support, approval ratings, um, voter priorities, etc. But the only one that I really care about, especially right now, is right here. Voter intention. Boom. And it looks like it's going to be a landslide. 64% to her 35 and I like this we're capturing 39 percent of Republican voters and the heavy mix of independents so she's not even like killing it within her own party we're only getting 76 percent which is a little bit of a surprise but whatever it's not a big deal the bottom line is we're going to win we can probably Go ahead and just burn through a bunch of weeks here and get kind of like the, this election. Where does it say uh, overview? OK, so it takes place in week 45 or whatever. We're going to run one poll here just because now we're pretty close to election day and we're still 60, 40. So we're fine. We're going to win. Let's just get there now. OK, local newspaper has put together a candidate questionnaire. With an overview of each candidate's policies, would you like to participate? I'm going to say yes. All that that means is we have five less hours to do fundraising, which I'm not really that worried about. Um, and then so what it will do is kind of get my policies out there for the public to review. I feel like my lights just blinked off for a second. Maybe I'm losing my mind. Anyway, um, we're, we're going to win this election. Here we go. So it's election day. Judd and Devin are going at it here, and it looks like it's going to be old Judd. We can go ahead and speed this up. And now when we look here, as you can see, it looks like it's going to be a pretty comfortable victory here, which is kind of what we anticipated. Probably the same thing here. Judd is going to win there. City Council, one Republican, actually two Republicans are winning. So there are certain parts of the city that might, like here, District 10, is more heavily Republican. Same thing here in District 12. So there are, there are going to be a few, but the good news is the overall mix is going to be much heavier towards the Democrats. And again, we won pretty comfortably here. 62 and a half to 37 and a half um, and see how many more people voted in the general election than in the primary. Um, so that's pretty typical. A lot of people ignore primaries. Um, but anyway, all right, so we won. Our first week will start at the beginning of 2020. So neither side in the city won or lost or gained or lost any seats. But the reality is with 10 against five and a Democratic mayor, if we write any kind of legislation, it's probably going to pass as long as it's supported by the Democratic side of the spectrum. So now when we go here into office, there's nothing here yet. Um, but there will be. Here's a message from our campaign opponent. Congratulations on winning the election. Thank you. Thanks. You were a worthy opponent. Boom. Now, there won't be anything really for me to do. However, this stuff is kind of interesting. You can go in here, and we'll do more of this later when it matters. But, like, if I wanted to, I could sit here and watch the presidential debate. And so here... Biff Powers, man, I hope he wins because his name is awesome. He's pushing health care and Medicaid expansion. Um, Emily Temple. So this is the Democratic uh, primary, I guess. Or Democratic debate, right? So here we go. Emily Temple also supports Medicaid expansion. They all support Medicaid expansion. Blah, 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 blah. So we've got things there that you can kind of click through and get a feel for the different candidates. Um, but anyway, we don't need to do that right now.
We got a Thanksgiving parade in Pittsburgh. Yeah, we'll head. We'll go ahead and, and go. So we got up early, got a good spot along the parade route. The early, early morning sun warms your face as you enter the cooled autumn air. I'll tell you what, Thanksgiving in Pittsburgh, it's like more like a crisp autumn air because or cold autumn air because it's probably pretty darn cold up there. Anyway. All right, so we have an enjoyable experience, and then we go home for a pleasant Thanksgiving dinner. I don't really know why they have that in, in the game, because I'm not sure that it makes any difference, other than maybe, like, name recognition or something. Look at that. We got 10 political points, and we have a 57% job approval rating, and we haven't even started our job yet. So that's cool. So there's not really going to be, like here, Democratic primary debate. I could watch another one, but we don't need to. Schedule is empty, and we're about to come up on the end of the year. Now, this is this can be important because what it says here is it's going to tell you which elections are going to be taking place. It's also going to tell you things like this. Gail Todd will not seek re-election. Um, and so this is where, if I wanted to, Gail Todd is a state representative. So if I go to the state, I can go to state house politicians and i could find gail todd okay figure out what district she's in and i could try to run in that district if it's the district that i'm from right so there's things like that that you can kind of take advantage of if you know the incumbent isn't gonna run there's stuff like that that you can um you know capitalize on if you're paying attention but the the we don't need to worry about this a whole lot because we just got elected to city council and we're going to do that for a few years. But, you know, maybe partway through our um, job or, or our, um, you know, tenure as a city councilman, we announce our candidacy for state house or something along those lines. Or mayor is probably the next logical step for us in our career. So anyway, um, <clears throat> that's that. We are now to the beginning of our first actual year on the job. So we are a city council member. We can do things um, that can influence local legislation. And so, like, here we have a message from the mayor because now, like, the mayor's our boss. They congratulate us, and we'll say, yep, I think we can uh, – you know, accomplish many great things. So we'll say that. I don't think it really matters that much. Now, <clears throat> as far as like stuff that we can now do on the job, if I go to campaign, there's really nothing that I'm going to be doing because we are not um, doing any actual like campaigning for a position. But what we're going to do is like, we're still going to be doing some... Why is it not letting me do 90? I want to do 90 and 10. There we go. So we're going to spend some time with automated office events. For whatever is left over, we want to spend that time doing fundraising. And if you'll notice, like this kind of bothers me. If I go into my office, I can't go and see my staff now, um, which is kind of frustrating because I might not want to be paying some of the people what I am. I can't even really like see my own personal finances unless I go here. And now what I can see is I still got my hundred grand in here. We're going to add 30,000 to that each year, but we're down to 1.5 million on the campaign funds uh, front. That is a, a number that we're going to have to monitor because like if we run for mayor, the salary there I think is only 60 grand. And we can pump some of that back into campaign funds, but we need to be making, you know, we need this number to start going up eventually. And to do that, we probably need to get to at least the state uh, level as opposed to the city level. Um, and ideally, we could go from mayor straight to like the, the House or the Senate at the federal level because then campaign funds start pouring in big time. But it might be challenging because you got to have a little bit of political clout 
to become, uh, you know, a state senator. So we'll see. Or a, you know, a, a senator at the federal level. So anyway, um, what I think we will do here is we're at the point where um, we've just won our first office. We're getting ready to start doing the job. So let's go ahead and call it here. We'll start the next episode by maybe looking at doing some things along the lines of legislation and uh, see if we can't clean up this city. Um, so anyway, if you have not done so already, please be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and comment below, and we will see you all next time. Or shall I say this afternoon?